Good morning and welcome to February 21st worship. This is our first Sunday in Lent. And as you can see, I'm wearing my purple Lent stole. This is something that we have talked about on several occasions, especially with our kids, uh, that I wear a different stole for a different time of the season. And this is the stole I wear for Lent. So this will be the stole that you'll see. I have a few announcements for you. Uh, first of all, keep an eye out on our Facebook page as we will be continuing to update for our drive. If you haven't seen that video yet, it came out yesterday. Uh, Andrew and I are teaming up with We The Least to raise items for pads, both in Peru and Ottawa. Due to the influx of visitors, they are running low on supplies. And so we're gathering, collecting, excuse me, we are collecting items for them. Uh, the specifics of that will be in the description box. Uh, but the big fun is that for every item, one of us will be getting a pie in the face. So keep an eye out for that as we'll be giving you updates on how that's going. And the drive goes through March 7th. Additionally, the church will be reopening on March 7th, so keep that day in mind. We're only opening to 25% capacity. Masks and social distancing are required. If you would like to attend our in-person worship, which is at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings, go ahead and either call our office and register, or you can Facebook our page through direct message, and you can register that way as well. With that, let us begin our worship. So 
and gracious God, on this first Sunday in the season of Lent, remind us of your love and faithfulness toward us and help us to be faithful toward you. And we ask this in the name of your Son and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. lesson today comes from the epistle of 1st Peter chapter 3 verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through the water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blink! <laughs> Blink! <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were doing, I so don't I was know just either. waiting. <laughs> well, hi, Dave. Hello! How are you? I'm a little sleepy. little sleepy? Uh-huh. Did you and Romper and Cupcake have a nice Valentine's? We did. You did? Uh-huh. Oh, wonderful. Did you and Cupcake make up? We sure did. Good. Did you apologize? Uh-huh. Very good. Now, today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Do you know what Lent is? Don't listen to her. It never really ended. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> You do? Uh-huh. Okay, well, just in case our kids don't know what Lent is, we're going to explain it. Okay. 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 So, first of all, the word Lent is a Latin word, 
which means springtime. Huh. So yeah. it's not the stuff all over my pajamas I've been wearing all Well, year? that's lint too, but that's a different kind of lint. <laughs> <laughs> that's lint with an I. This is lint with an E. <laughs> and during this season, the church does lots of special things to get ready for Easter. We usually do kind of sad things in church, right? We talk about sad things and we talk about hard things. And sometimes people give up foods to eat or maybe they give up fun things to do. Mm -hmm. They do that as part of a way to get to know God and be closer to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things that we do during Lent that not a lot of people realize is a Lent practice is give alms. Have you heard of giving alms? Nope. So giving alms is kind of a fancy church way of saying doing nice things for people in need. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So our church is going to do a community alms giving huh. through a donation that we're doing, collecting here through the huh. community oh. for PADS. Do you oh. know what PADS is? Nope. It's a homeless shelter. that We have one in Peru, and we have one in Ottawa, huh. and they take care of people who don't have anywhere to live. Huh. And because it's been so cold, they've had a lot of people staying at their shelter. Mm -hmm. And they're running out of things that they need. No! Mm -hmm. They're running out of things to clean with, they're running out of clean water, they're running out of um, disinfectant and hand sanitizer, uh -oh. they're running out of, of dishes. And um, they're, they've got enough food, but they even need some help preparing that food. Mm -hmm. So we're collecting stuff here at the church to help folks at the homeless shelter help the people that stay there. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we're doing that to help the staff. And we're going to do that as our almsgiving for the community. Now, we aren't organizing folks to go and help with meals. But I encourage you, if you want to help with a meal, um, they need somebody at the Ottawa location to donate meals for 25 to 30 people. All you have to do is call them and set up a time to do that. I think Andrew and I are going to do that as part of our personal almsgiving in addition to what we're doing with the church. Hmm. Yeah. Can I help? Yes, you can. Yay! <laughs> I think it's very important, especially during Lent, to remember people who don't have what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially now when it's so cold. And Lent's been going on for a year. And Lent's <laughs> been going on for a year. <laughs> Why don't we pray? <laughs> so kids, if you want to help, I encourage you to go ahead and check out our description box in our video and see what you might like to donate. And just a reminder, everything that gets donated means that either Pastor Mary, Andrew, or one of the people from the band We The Least is going to get a pie in the face. And that'll help make it fun. So why don't you take a look at our description box and find something you might like to try and help donate. With that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your perseverance, for your presence, and for your faithfulness toward us. We ask that you would help us to see the people that you love that are in need of help and assistance. May you inspire us to give, to love, and participate. I ask that you would bless all of the people who watch us today, our grown-ups, our teens, our kids, and our puppets. Help us all to love you and know you better. And we ask this in the name of your Son and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. i
Dressed in white and sealed by the Spirit Marked with the sign of Christ the King Born of one Father, we are His children Joyfully now God's praise we sing of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to your sight. May we go forth from this place inspired by, overwhelmed with, and empowered by your love. We ask this in the name of your Son and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. While it hasn't been a full calendar year since this pandemic began, our church calendar has indeed come full circle. I think back to our last liturgy team meeting as we planned for Lent 2020. We had this brilliant idea. We were going to really unsettle the church. We brought in folding chairs and closed off the pews. We planned communion for every single week. We were going to provide meals for folks to discuss the sermon after church. We thought we were so clever. And had it been any other year, we would have been. We wanted to offer a jolt to our community to help everyone grow spiritually so that we could launch some pretty cool ministry opportunities come Easter. I can't help but laugh at our big plans. Little did we know just how unsettling the world would become within just a few weeks. Peter probably spent a lot of time laughing at himself. After all, he was the first to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and still completely miss the target on precisely what that meant. He was the one who refused to let Jesus wash his feet at the Last Supper. He promised to never leave Jesus' side and even cut a man's ear off to defend him, only to turn around and deny Jesus three times later that night. Peter jumped out of the boat to walk on water, but then nearly drowned instead. He refused to partake in unclean food, being a good Jewish man, only to misunderstand the metaphor for God's love for Gentiles. Peter preached boldly at Pentecost, but then struggled to maintain a spine when dealing with church conflicts. Yes, I hope he found lots to laugh about. But even with his flaws and miscalculations, Peter has something extraordinary going for him. He understands God's grace and never gives up embracing it. That's the true heart of today's passage. To be sure, this is an odd passage. Who in the world are these souls in prison that he's referencing, for instance? But let's remember that it's one half of a conversation. This is a letter, and we're missing the letter that he's responding to. Just as with the other epistles, these letters address specific circumstances in the writer's and reader's lives. So there's always a bit of mystery here and there that we struggle to work out. And for that reason, I suggest we not spend too much time on the strangeness of this passage. Peter and his interlocutors are clearly working out some early theology on the importance of Christ's death and what exactly happens at baptism. 
we've talked about and will continue to address both of those matters as time goes on. But for today, let's not get too invested in that detail. Instead, I want to focus on what's behind all of this. This is ultimately a passage about grace and faithfulness. Folks in the Methodist family love talking about grace and faithfulness. Those topics are our jam. Methodists are people of grace. We have our big three that you hear me talk about, prevenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. We have the sacraments of communion and baptism, and then there's the means of grace. The means of grace are friendship, prayer, marriage, sharing a meal, attending worship, and so many others listed in our book of discipline. And we use these expressions of grace to teach ourselves and others to see and articulate the Holy Spirit's movement in our lives. It's all the same grace from the same God expressed in a variety of ways. The more we learn how God embraces us, the easier it is to see God's presence in our lives, no matter what the world throws at us. The more we see God in our lives, the more we see God in others, and the more comfortable we become with sharing God in the people around us. And grace is tied to faithfulness. First of all, God is faithful to us. God loves us. God preserved Noah and his family in the time of the flood and shared Christ with us to take on the consequences of sin. God uses these events and so many more to bring us near to him. Through trial and tribulation, God provides a way standing faithfully with us that we may be drawn closer to him. But while God's work through Christ frees us from the final consequences of sin, it doesn't emancipate us from human suffering. Peter and the early Christians knew this all too well. Pain was commonplace for the early Christians. Exiled, persecuted, martyred, and maligned, Peter and the church must have been familiar with the risks they took and the faith they shared. This is where our own faithfulness comes in. When we commit ourselves to a relationship with Christ through confession and baptism, we make a covenant to embrace God's grace in our lives. We accept the love, guidance, and companionship of the worshiping body. We share in the gospel story. For Peter, that means we take on the risks that come with our faith. In his world, that meant suffering for our faith. Oftentimes, it meant dying for our faith. In our world, where that's far less common, we make other kinds of sacrifices. Those sacrifice look, sacrifices look like giving our time, perspectives, worldviews, finances, and witness. They mean showing up and participating, and sometimes it does still mean suffering. Suffering when the people we love don't understand or accept us. Suffering when we're left with, un with unanswered questions or prayers. Suffering caused by living in a broken world. But that suffering in a strange way is a model of grace in itself. First, that suffering is a constant reminder that our world is not as it should be. When we see suffering or when we experience it, the first step is to grieve. Grief is a sign of love and faithfulness, friends. Don't fear it. Don't mask it. Don't shun it. The next step is to do something about it. We have a long history of faithful people teaching us how we can work as individuals and a community to heal our world's aches. 
the prophets preached, the women sang, the priests trained, the judges defended, the disciples spread the gospel, and Jesus showed us the way. When we see suffering in our world, God's grace prompts us to respond with hope and love. And when we get discouraged, we can remember that we are not alone in sorrow. We have each other to help carry us, and we have God. Christ suffered not only as a consequence of sin, but also because of God's great love. God took on our burdens, understood our shortcomings, our hurt, our suffering, our shame, because of love. God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. In so doing, he showed us just how faithful he really is. And in grace, he was not ashamed of our condition, taking it on for himself, that we may know him too. In response to the hearing of the word, let us join together with our joys and concerns. I have a few for you. Prayers for Tony. Tony is the son of one of our parishioners. He was recently diagnosed with cancer and has an upcoming surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the devastating weather in the south, we've heard a lot about Texas on the news. Texas isn't the only state that's been suffering due to the snow. Additionally, um, tornadoes came through the Appalachian Mountains earlier this week and devastated the communities that live there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for those among us who are grieving, especially continued prayers for the families of Dennis Wheeler, Denny Shaver, and Marty Eddy. Additionally, we have two new families, the families of Brenda Dye and Vicki Setchell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we have a new addition to our church community. Welcome Brennan Joseph Songroth. He was born on Monday and um, he and mom are doing wonderfully. So congratulations to the Songroth family. We cannot wait to meet Brennan and all of the babies we've had during this time. I'm so excited to do lots of baptisms. <laughs> With that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this first Sunday of Lent, this feast day among fasting. We remember your love and faithfulness toward us. Acknowledging that grace is love spoken out loud. Help us love, be gracious and faithful to you and to those around us. We come before you with a joy of baby Brennan. We ask that you would bless him, that you would make him bold and strong and courageous in your name, and that you would be with his family, that you would keep them all healthy that you'd keep them all strong, and that they would grow in knowledge and love of you each and every day. But we also pray for those among us who are struggling. For the devastating weather throughout the South, Lord, we ask that you would keep people warm, keep them safe, protect them, their homes, in their lives and well-being. We pray for those among us who are sick. Especially today, we pray for Tony. Lord, be with his doctors, his caretakers, his staff, and his family. Pour out your Holy Spirit of healing over him wisdom to his doctors 
and perseverance and peace to everyone. Heavenly Father, we pray for those among us who are tired, who have hit a pandemic wall, who are overworked or underworked, who are still looking for work, for those who are struggling, who are at risk, who are in pain. We ask that you would protect them all. That you would be near to each and every one and that you would give them a community of support. Keep them in good health and help them to endure. We pray for those among us who are grieving there has been so much to lose this year. We especially pray for the families of Brenda and Vicki, for whom the grief is especially fresh. Comfort your people and bring forth hope. Lord, we pray for all of those requests that we hold within ourselves, of those circumstances that bring us joy or anxiety, of the people on our list, and any others that we don't know about. Lord, speak to each and every single one according to the need. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here that we would be people of your grace, your love, and your faithfulness. In all that we do, in all that we are, may we grow to reflect you more. We lift all of this before you in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
forth in love, in grace, and in faithfulness. Be changed and allow God to change the world around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.